crypto belongs to you and no one can take that away from you. From the moment Satoshi dropped Bitcoin in January 3rd, 2009, from that moment, hyper-Bitcoinization was possible. And the lizards knew that and they got ahead of y'all and they started planning a way to deceive you from what Bitcoin is truly about. Jeff Berwick, we see each other eye to eye and that's why we're here. We, we started the Crypto Vigilante alongside Ed Bugos and Mr. X, the anonymous Mr. X. And Mr. X, I used to be anonymous, I used to love it. Now the nerd inside me cries, but no, I'm, I don't cry no more, I'm really happy to be here. Um, and and it's, it's, a, it's been a blessing, it's really been a blessing because Jeff, Ed Bugos and I have been able to give these guys a voice. And this past year, I've been focusing on getting you guys the tools necessary so that you guys can be active participants. I don't want you guys sitting in the bench anymore. Game, that's done. Somebody was saying something. I was walking around earlier and somebody said, the future of crypto looks great in the next five, 10 years, blah, 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 great. I'm like, what the fuck? Five, 10 years? AI is already here. Wake the fuck up. We need hyper Bitcoinization to happen now. Okay? And my crew of Bitcoiners got it all figured out. Okay? Got it all figured out. And we have the formula. It's probably not the formula. There's many formulas, but I'm going to show you guys a formula to hyper Bitcoinization. All of the building blocks are done. And we can honestly be in a post hyper Bitcoinization world in two weeks. We need to reach hyper Bitcoinization before AI takes over. Wake the fuck up. This is what we do at the Crypto Vigilance as we tell you though, what the fuck are we talking about? What the fuck is this crypto? What is this? The what is? We call that fundamental analysis. Technical analysis is the when do I get in? When do I buy, right? And you see that all over, but the dudes, Mr. A and W, aren't they fucking awesome? Yo, you guys know you guys are get information from the first guys to chart Bitcoin and Bitcoin's history. You do know that those are the most OG in crypto history. They're the first ones to chart Bitcoin in the Bitcoin talk forums in 2010. Shout out to Mr. A and W. Fucking love you guys. You guys are amazing. And by the way, none of these alphabet people, A, W, X, Z, Y, P, they don't need to do this. They do this because they love you guys and because they're mission oriented and they want to be part of, they, they want to make sure that we accomplish the goal, the task at hand. Operational security, we call it OPSEC, is like, what the, how the fuck do I actually use this? So that's from our manifesto. If you want to take a picture, feel free. But overall, what we aim for at all times is to orient you guys' attention towards drowning out tyranny and driving the market's attention towards that which prospers, which profits freedom most. We want to make tyranny costly. That's the end of the game. And that's what literally Bitcoin and its incentive structure, economically speaking, was has the code, economically speaking, to produce the market drivers necessary for an ever more free world. Who's a pirate around here? What's up? Okay. All right. Enough said. We created a space for you guys to come and learn. Sure. Come, but don't, don't, don't wait for us to be your Messiah. Okay. We want you to be an active participant in this story of Bitcoin, of crypto. We don't want you to be just a, just someone that just listens and just follows what we say. No, 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 no. Internalize it, digest it. You can understand these things too. Right now you're sitting here, you're probably way more ahead than anybody you know in your life. Okay? Be an active participant. Because if you are not, the vast majority of people 
put themselves in a very vulnerable position when they have to ask someone what to do with their money. We don't want that for you. We want you guys to really internalize it. When someone asks me, Raph, what should I buy? What should I do? The first thing I tell them is like nothing. You need to sit your ass down, open up a laptop, fire it up for a week and do research. So you get to the point where you actually don't have to ask anybody anything. You know exactly what, how to work this, how to use this, what to buy, when to buy, and what to do with your life. We're just, we literally created a research group so you guys can be part of the most badass fucking network of crypto anarchists that are discovering this because we're all still discovering what Satoshi gave us. You do understand that, right? That this is multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary. This is not the genius behind this. Honestly, guys, this was divinely inspired. It really was. The more you learn about this, the more you will be blown away. Y'all know what that means? Raise your hands if you know what that means. We have a real cool rap t group that comes to Anarcho Poco often. Unfortunately, they're not here right now. And they have a real cool song called They're Watching Me and They're the Free Knots. They're watching you, they're watching me. Why they watching? It's tyranny. The internet, the, tel the cell phones. Who you know and where you going, right? We need you guys to help us. Because whether you realize it or not, you're being hacked right now in your soul, in your mind. Raise your hand if you know a kid addicted to TikTok. No, for real. Raise your hand if you yourself would say that you are maybe addicted to social media. We got a lot of virtuous people here. I'm happy I'm fit. Yes, you guys are awesome. So, look. What is it that social media does is that it feeds off of you. They profile you to manipulate you. And they give, make you dopamine addicts and they want you to become their zombies so that they can literally mine you for data. Your mind is their mining ground. What if I told you that Satoshi gave us Bitcoin to fight against that in itself? Because real wealth in this world is not even in what we usually know as commodities. The most important commodity is your mind. And Satoshi foresaw this, and that's what I'm going to show you today. Hyperbitcoinization is was started by the emperor of Bitcoin, Daniel Krawitz himself. It's the realization that we will enter, just like there's going to be hyperinflation of the dollar, hyperbitcoinization is going to be something that once it starts and it already started actually you can't stop now just because you we can have a dollar collapse and still not have decent uh, hyper Bitcoinization and that's scary I need you guys to know that and understand that okay but if you know someone's out to get you are you gonna sit around and wait for them to come get you well, fuck that I'm gonna go after and get them first and that's the mindset you guys need to have because if we allow AI to take over before hyper Bitcoinization, we're all going to be fucked. Every one of us. Mm. All right? You think the lockdowns were just something? No, dude, they were. Just wait. And how is it that they're about doing this? They already have the vast majority of the planet turned into zombies addicted to the dopamine of social media. Look at how easily everybody was spooked. Right? And they gave up their rights. Until this day, you got now concentration camps in like Australia, Australia, as Jeff calls it, and China, right? You think that can't happen to you? It can happen here too. It can happen anywhere. So we have to be active participants, guys. We can't sit on the sidelines anymore. Honestly? To be completely honest, one more show you guys today, if we all work as a team, 
We can live in a post hyper Bitcoinization world in two weeks. Bitcoin. Bitcoin. This is where the PSYOP started at the beginning. They had told you, focus on the coin aspect of Bitcoin, disregard the bit aspect of Bitcoin. What the fuck is the bit aspect of Bitcoin? I understand the coin aspect of Bitcoin. The bit aspect of Bitcoin is this computational power, and they told you, you can't do that here. Do it somewhere else, somewhere called Ethereum. You can't do that here. Well, fuck you. I'm doing it. Me and my boys have been doing it. We've been doing smart contracts on Bitcoin. We've been doing a lot of stuff, actually. Really cool stuff. Some of you guys are part of it. You don't even know. You guys are having fun with ordinals? Who, who here? Raise your hand if you heard about ordinals. Yeah? Okay. Is any, raise your hand if you minted an ordinal. Yeah, you're collaborating in a hyper Bitcoinization. Thank you. If only BTC could scale, right? So the coin aspect of Bitcoin, and this is, oh, dude, one of our analysts at the Crypto Vigilante, Mr. Z, dude, if you guys read his stuff, dude, it's so beautiful, like the way he writes and expresses himself. So one day, he, he, he dude, this, for a while there, when we were talking about this, the dude couldn't sleep. He just kept telling me, Raph, dude, I, I'm just on this, bro. Asking questions, just we've been going back and forth. And he sent something very beautiful once it hit him. He's like, oh shit. Now I get it. He said, he said, he wrote me, Satoshi, the coin aspect of Bitcoin was just the fuel that Satoshi gave Bitcoin to jumpstart this machine because he knew or they knew that that fuel will not come from outside of Bitcoin. So it had to create the fuel from itself, from within itself the incentive structures, the economic incentive structures, but we were led astray. They use our goodwill against us as libertarians. They use our rhetoric against us. They use our, our reasoning against us. No, I, I'm going for 45. <laughs> All right, Jeff's there. You can okay. get out. <laughs> All right. So, um, so, um, so, so people ask, well, well, Bitcoin, why isn't it a privacy coin? It was never meant to be. Bitcoin's supposed to be an honesty machine, the book that can never be burned, the honesty ledger. As this world of AI grows with ChatGPT and the like, all they're doing is creating more noise. More noise. They want to drown you in noise. To confuse you and to manipulate you better with deep fakes and whatever not. So I'm going to give you guys the, the, the formula for hyper-Bitcoinization. You guys ready? Yeah. Number one, how do you build on Bitcoin to take us to 100 over... Okay, ChatGPT reached 100 million users in one month. I'm going to show you guys how we can do it in two weeks. Actually, it took them two, 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 two months. We can do it in one month or two, actually two weeks. We can do it if we really want to. We build on-chain, open source, and interoperably. You have to realize that no business in this world will ever outlive Bitcoin. At the end of the day, you work for Bitcoin. Whether you realize it or not, you work for Bitcoin. Or Darrow, whatever network you prefer. But you're working for... That's the beautiful thing about the blockchain. The blockchain is the creation of triple entry accounting, where you no longer need the corporate structure that comes from dual entry accounting. That's old news. That's archaic. I can expound more on that by telling you that the investors behind crypto companies themselves are, do not want the companies that they invest in to hold their crypto in reserve for that company because they already they're using that company as a hedge against against you know their the coin that they're holding in crypto and Bitcoin whatever for if it crashes you know so Incentives from the corporate structure are not aligned with our with the design that Satoshi gave us. You gotta shed the old. You need new wine for new wineskins. You need to realize that Bitcoin is the company. Or Darrow is the company you work for. You need to build on-chain, open source, and interoperably. What do you build? These three types of pre prerequisites have to be there in every application, in one way, shape, or form. 
okay? Positive dopamine triggers that don't make you into a zombie, but to actually uplift your soul and that focus your attention on things that matter, okay? You also have to have no dependency on externalities for movement. So no more dependency on the FTXs or the Binances of this world. If there's an exchange that is not on chain, I don't trust it. Nobody, nobody knew how to, you know, if they, if FTX have the money in reserve. But why? They're selling you crypto. Why aren't they using the damn technology that they're selling you? Think about it. Because they're just using it as an investment vehicle. They don't care about it. They're just banksters. Follow the people that build on chain, interoperatively and open source. Building on chain will always be faster, cheaper, more efficient, and more interconnected than any other topological structure in existence. This is mathematically like precise as one plus one equals two. The blockchain is the best type of network for us to collaborate. We're two hops away from being connected to the entire network. No other type of network in computer science, in mathematics gives us that. We need to have the on-chain exchange, and that is the open order lock, like Darrow NFTs does this, okay? See, Darrow's really smart. Because <laughs> everything I'm telling you, Darrow's going for privacy by default. So everything that I'm telling you about, add privacy by default. That's Darrow, okay? And the third thing, prerequisite, is how do we counter AI itself with all of this noise that they're creating? The emperor of Bitcoin started thinking and he realized that within Bitcoin there is the incentive structure found in nature that biologists call the handicap principle. Has anyone know, you guys ever, you guys, anybody heard of the handicap principle? The handicap principle is that naturally fit males have the capacity to spend the energy that they will never get back to show off and attract females. Example, the peacock. The peacock gives himself a handicap by having a beautiful tail. He's making himself more vulnerable to predators, obviously. But he, he says, he's literally sending that psycho, evolutionary psychological message to the peahens of like, dude, look how fucking successful I am, that I can rock this big old tail and I can just go through the woods like nothing. That's the handicap principle. And in the genius of Satoshi, the handicap principle was, was built in within the Bitcoin the, the architecture itself in Bitcoin mining. Miners spend energy that they will never get back. And they signal to the world, anybody that's smart be like, damn, what the fuck are those computers doing over there? They're just spending energy? I gotta pay attention. That did its job. All you gotta do, the handicap principle, all it calls you to do is pay attention to a costly signal of spent energy. And if it catches your attention, remember, what is AI going after? Your eyeballs to screen, right? They wanna, okay. So now, what if we use Bitcoin energy to attract eyeballs to screen? Oh. So if all of a sudden, Monero people had a website where they were like a Reddit, but they were spending Monero Miner energy. You pay attention, right? Because if they're spending energy that they'll never get back, and you think the Monero people are very smart, you're gonna be like, I should pay attention to these people wasting energy on something that I should pay attention to. Essentially, um, Krawitz, we discovered a new type of Bitcoin transaction. One, you guys heard of Michael Saylor talk about like, Bitcoin is energy, money wrapped in energy. Well, what if I told you that we can wrap Bitcoin energy or any proof of work coin around anything on the internet? We have Darrow energy wrapped around any content on the internet. Monero energy wrapped around any content on the internet. Pirate chain energy wrapped around any type of data or content on the internet to signal what's important to you to save you time. So, this new type of Bitcoin transaction, I'm gonna give you an analogy. The way Ethereum scales is vertically, meaning that every time, if they were a bus station, the more passengers that they get, they have to build a bigger bus. How dumb is that, right? 
<laughs> you guys, we have to build a bigger bus, take it to the shop, make a bigger one. That's, that's like how Ethereum changes the global state of everything. I mean, they were designed after the banksters, after all. Pretty dumb. The way Bitcoin was designed was the UTXO model, which is scales horizontally parallel, which meaning if we have a bus station as Bitcoiners and we need to scale because we get more customers, what we do is that, what? We just buy more buses, duh, okay. Boost proof of work, what it is, is that we discovered a, mi a, a village of midgets that are multimillionaires and they need transportation, but they don't feel comfortable in the big buses that human beings use, so we put them in little buses where they're very comfortable, and then once we fill up those buses, we put it into the big, big bus, and that bus sp uh, registered and spreads it throughout the network. You guys understand what I'm saying now? That's this new type of Bitcoin transaction. And guess what? Since it's a new type of Bitcoin transaction, you can mine it on your laptop. Is that fucking cool? So think about it this way, okay? Bitcoin is a baby born, okay? And the baby born is has a lot of potentiality and things are programmed within it, right? For it to grow and become a man and all that. But you, the small blockers say, oh, he started walking, cool, he's just for walking. No more, he can't grow no more. All he can do is walk. What the fuck, bro? Let him grow. He's got more faculties. He can talk. He can read. He can reason. He can create. Okay? Us that embrace Bitcoin's computational power are like, let him grow. And so now, with this new type of Bitcoin transaction that has been discovered, we're letting Bitcoin talk to us. Can you believe this shit? Bitcoin's talking to us, guys. Fucking amazing. And all again, the story repeats itself. Proof of work versus proof of stake. Artificial intelligence is just noise. Noise machines. Bullshit. Oh, deep fake, how cool. Oh, this guy, this fucking thing here thinks for me. Really, dude, you think that's cool? He's making you dumb. Why don't you use your brain? Pick up a book, read. You know, wrestle with concepts, man. But no, people, people. So, AI is proof of, is proof of stake. Boost that comes from Bitcoin and Satoshi design is proof of work, okay? If you, do you trust Reddit? I don't trust Reddit. How do you know people in, behind, in the behind the scenes in Reddit are not just faking a boat so that you can see what they want you to see at the front page of the internet? Of course they're fucking doing that. So we're like, how do we fix this? How about we have an, we pay for upvotes? We did that with Twitch. But guess what? I can civil attack that too. I can create a thousand accounts on Twitch have one account, and I'm like, that account is a Rockstar account, so I'll just send a bunch of likes, nanotransactions of one penny, I like, 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 and I'm tricking Twitch and making Twitch, the network, think that that one, the Rockstar account is like, oh, really, oh, I should pay attention to. That's fucked. When you spend energy that you will never get back, it's a costly signal, and it is the hardest thing to fake. Sure, you can spend energy all you want, and sure, you can see a guy driving a Lambo, but you have to look for patterns of behavior over time. Can he really spend that energy? So, in other words, just because you see a guy driving a Lambo, he could be the chauffeur, he could be, I don't know, a rental agency, or he can be the owner. Boost proof of work catches your attention. You pay attention to costly signals. Driving a Lambo is a costly signal. Why would you drive a Lambo when you could drive a Toyota? Right? It's a costly signal. It does its job when it catches your attention, the job is done, okay? This is what costly signals do. It's the handicap principle. And costly signals are honest ones. 